This is Sports Overtime. Fans want to see good football, and they want, and, and we haven't played that. Uh, we're working around the clock to get it to be that. Welcome into another episode of Sports Over Time. Thank you as always for joining us. For Detroit Lions fans, this season has been one of familiar frustration. Just when you think there's a chance to get a defensive stand, it turns into a touchdown. For Michigan State football fans, they got to see former Spartan Kenneth Walker III back in action here in the mitten. Walker finished with 29 yards, but another Seattle running back had one of the best games in his career. Dan Campbell looking for his fifth win in his second year as the Lions head coach. And the former tight end knows he's got a weapon in T.J. Hawkinson. So down seven in the first quarter, Jared Goff finds Hawkinson on a 32-yard touchdown pass. Hawkinson finished with two touchdowns and 197 yard, 179 yards, the most from any Lions tight end in franchise history. Then in the third quarter, down 16, just a simple handoff to Jamal Williams combined with second level blocking equals a 51 yard touchdown run and the Lions are feeling good. Williams had 108 yards and two touchdowns, his biggest game since 2017. Later in the quarter, after the Seahawks got a redo on their third down because the clock wasn't set correctly, the Lions defense looking to bring some pressure on what they thought was going to be a pass. The blitz is coming from the left side of the Seahawks line, so Rashad Penny runs to the right. And on a third and 16, Penny takes it 36 yards to the house as the boos rain down and Lions fans are livid. The Lions were able to make it a three-point game late, but Penny breaks hearts again, bashing his way through the defense for another first down so Seattle could kneel out the rest of the clock as the Lions lose this one, 48-45. to Another close loss and a lot of things need to be fixed moving forward. We weren't real sharp, you know, it wasn't real clean. We had penalties, we had turnovers. Uh, one of those was for seven points, uh, which was the difference in the game. And then defensively, man, it just, you know, we weren't, we weren't good. So <clears throat> special teams made some plays, but then there was a couple we gave up too. So it was just, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't clean. And that, that's on me. Close isn't a thing anymore. Uh, we don't want to be close. We don't want to do any of that. We, we want to win. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard. It, it really is. It's hard to, to come out of a game like this and um, not win. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's, that's just what we're going to go back to work. We're going to, you know, grind and, and, and win. We, that's, that's really what we need to do. Well, another team looking for a big win was the Minnesota Vikings and former Michigan State quarterback Kirk Cousins, who were playing across the pond in London at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's part of the NFL's international games, and the way this one ended felt like a perfect way to show international fans the drama we feel each Sunday. After a penalty on third and goal, Cousins just trying to set up a screen pass, and Alexander Madison follows his blockers for a 15-yard touchdown, and he sits down for a cup of tea. Cool moment for MSU fans. Former Spartan wide receiver Jalen Naylor gets his first NFL catch on a fake punt that helped the Vikings get another field goal, extending the lead to five points. In the fourth quarter, the Saints answer, answered back. Taysen Hill takes it himself and finds the end zone to help retake the lead. The Vikings kicker Greg Joseph had himself a day. With 29 seconds left, he lines one up from 47 yards out and gives the Vikings the lead back. But the Saints were able to get within Will Lutz's range from 61 yards out to send it to overtime. It hits the uprights twice and it's no good. Double doink ends it as the Vikings hold on to win it 28 to 25. And the London press asked Cousins about the ending of this one. You seem to enjoy entertaining the fans here. Man, I would have loved to have pulled away. But uh, as I said to somebody on the field after the game, I said, it's a great product. I mean, if you're a fan, I mean, we gave you something to watch today. Kept it close and entertaining. But um, uh, yeah, it's crazy. I was thinking how six years ago it was Andy and, and I playing and uh, went to overtime and I was fully expecting we'll make that kick and we were going to go to overtime again. And I was just expecting to not have it end in a tie or a draw again. So uh, grateful we won. Great to get on an eight hour flight back and know that we got a win and we're three and one. But um, 
you know, you also think about all the things you got to do better. Well, another quarterback who used to throw touchdowns right here at mid-Michigan is a Dallas Cowboys gunslinger, Cooper Rush. The Lansing Catholic and Central Michigan alum has gotten off to a hot start in his time as the Cowboys starting QB, looking to continue his undefeated streak at home this afternoon. Now, jumping to the second quarter, down one on third and six from the nine-yard line. Rush gets out of the pocket, looking for someone in the end zone and finds Michael Gallup running to the back corner to help the Cowboys retake the lead. And Rush was just warming up when he came to putting passes on target. Uh, starting in the fourth quarter, Rush rifles one to a wide open C.D. Lamb. Rush finished with 223 passing yards as the Cowboys would go on to win it 25 to 10. The final Cooper Rush becomes the first Cowboys quarterback to win his first four starts. And he was asked what it's felt like to be on this run. It's been fun. Uh, try and enjoy it. Um, you know, the NFL doesn't let you enjoy it much. Uh, you got to go in week in, week out and play. But, uh, you know, the 4 0 is just, I mean, you guys saw it today, the defense and, you know, all the, all the breaks we catch. And, you know, it's just kind of lucky. QB win stats are, they are what they are. Um, it's a team game. And, you know, it's nice having the defense have our back like that and some special team plays. And Brett's making kicks and we're doing just enough on offense. All right, well, it's time for us to take a timeout. But when we come back, we're not done talking about local football players. We're going to take another look at what's continuing to be the problem for Michigan State's defense. So stay with us. You are watching 6 News, sponsored by Hager Fox Heating and Air Conditioning, keeping families comfortable for over 81 years. Auto owners protect your house because to you, it's home. That's simple human sense. Ask Ackley Peters Halbert in Eden Rapids if auto owners make sense for you. It's time to show off your Spartan pride by taking a trip to Tuck Town, presented by Meyer. Join us at one field three hours before kickoff. Enjoy live DJs, food trucks, and family activities before each MSU home game. We'll see you in Tuck Town. Help us save lives today, yours and someone else's. It could be your son and daughter. And your brother and sister. Your wife or husband. And your mother and father. Getting your COVID vaccine frees up hospital beds for those who need them now. Get vaccinated for yourself and for your loved ones. For your friends. And your grandparents. I'm not asking, I'm begging. Please get your vaccination. Not tomorrow, not next week, now. For me. For you. For all of us. It matters. Our patients often ask, what's the difference between a hearing screening and diagnostic testing? A screening tells if there is a hearing loss, but diagnostic testing determines the type and degree of loss. At Advanced Audiology, we conduct full hearing diagnostic evaluations. We go the extra mile to understand your hearing needs and we design customized solutions for you. Hearing starts here at Advanced Audiology, serving and supporting our community. Football is the game of life and it brings the community together white, black, boys, girls. Flag, tackle. Football can revive communities. That's why I think you know, football is on the right path. Community with football is very accepting and loving to people who enjoy the sport. Win or lose, they do it as a family. Join Alyssa Slotkin and Tom Barrett as they take on Michigan's political future during the 7th Congressional Debate. Hosted by 6 News Capital Correspondent Tim Skubik. Live Thursday, October 6th at 7 on WLNS. Auto Owners ensures your small business because it isn't small to you. That's simple human sense. Ask the Diversified Insurance Group in Lansing if auto owners make sense for you. Welcome back, everyone. The Michigan State football team has made a lot of us put that look on our face over the last couple of weeks. It's been a beacon of frustration for a lot of football fans right here in mid-Michigan. And after yesterday's road loss to the University of Maryland, which saw the MSU defense give up over 480 yards for the third loss in a row, uh, fans started to call for the changes of those calling the plays on defense. 
Well, Mel Tucker, after the loss, shared his message to those MSU fans. The fans want to see good football. And, they want, and, and we haven't played that. Uh, we're working around the clock to get it to be that. Obviously, we want our fans to show up and support us. That's what we need. You know, so, you know, that's, that's what I have to say. We need, them, we need our fans to show up and support us. That's, what, that's, that's what's going to help us the most. But I understand their frustration. That's sports. You know, we all want to win in the worst way. And so, um, you know, they're frustrated. And, uh, and God knows that we're not happy about the situation. Well, from one MSU team to another playing the University of Maryland this weekend, the MSU women's soccer team is coming off its huge win over the sixth-ranked Penn State Nittany Lions, looking for another Big Ten victory against the Terrapins this afternoon. And let's just say they got some payback for the football team. Let's get to the action. Jackson, Lauren DeBow in the 37th minute with a beautiful shot for her seventh goal of the season. It would stay 1-0 until the second half. Where went off a free kick. Celia Gaynor heads one off the leg of a Maryland defender, and it goes in. Plays like that just made you think that this is the Spartans' day. About 20 minutes later, another free kick from almost the same spot. Zivana Lubovich makes sure it's the same result. Her first goal of the season is a beautiful header. She's jumping for joy, and how could you not be? And to put sprinkles on this Sunday, the Spartans pass it ahead to Maggie Illick, whose shot is just too fast for the keeper as the Spartans would go on to win it forward and nail the final to remain unbeaten in Big Ten play. That's all the time we have for this show. From all of us here at WLNS, we thank you for watching and hope you and yours have a happy and healthy rest of your week. Good night, everyone.